My fiancé said she wanted to explore her options and open our relationship before we get married. I, 29M, have been living with Julie, 28F, for three years and had plans to get married this fall. When I proposed last year Julie brought up that before she got married, she wanted to explore her sexuality before settling down. After a lot of discussion, she started dating other women and it was a bit much too fast. She was going out three to four nights a week to queer bars and meeting a bunch of people. Our intimacy got cut in half to once or twice a week and I started feeling a lot of resentment. This sparked several discussions that ended with me getting to date other people as well, much to her dismay. Julie finally found someone in Kate, 30F, became her girlfriend and they met two to three times a week, often overnight. Things became manageable for a couple of months and then Julie asked me to start using rubbers whenever we had cuddles. When I asked why she said her doctor had recommended it until a female issue, she was having cleared up. After a couple of weeks, I asked if things had improved and when I questioned her about going back to the doctor she broke down and told me that Kate had complained that I was polluting her cavern and that prompted the request. Under protest, I agreed to keep using rubbers. I have a sensitivity issue with rubbers, takes me 2-3x as long to finish and the wrong size can kill my drive. Sometimes this means stopping and adding more oil which delays things even longer. Longer and harder sessions sometimes leave her sore which finally led to not being able to have cuddles the day before a date with Kate. Now I'm lucky to get cuddles with Julie more than once a week, and I'm usually not that lucky. Obviously, this caused some friction between me and Julie, and this may it all came to a head when we were supposed to meet with a wedding planner. I slammed on the brakes and said we had issues we needed to work out before going any further. Julie's mother was already in the planning mode and was confused because she was in the dark, which I made Julie handle and we pushed the wedding off till next spring. Also in the meantime, a co-worker introduced me to his cousin, Pam, 24F. I explained my situation and after some thought, she was in for some casual dating. Less than two weeks and we are spending four nights a week together. Physical touch is both our love languages, and the contact and PDA are like electricity between us. We also weren't using rubbers which had a negative effect on my intimacy with Julie. I was having problems maintaining full mass now after the rubber was put on. All of a sudden, Julie says we need to fix things and prioritize each other more, and maybe cut back on our time with our other partners. I know her mom is on her case about getting the wedding back on track, and the rubber issue gets discussed a lot. Right now, my emotional-slash-physical needs are being met by Pam 70% versus Julie 30% and Pam, and I have been using the L word a lot recently. If Julie gives me an ultimatum right now, she may not like the answer. The easiest way forward with Julie would mean her cutting off Kate. May not be fair, but probably the most viable. Relevant comments. Does OP want non-monogamy? OP. I didn't want non-monogamy in the first place. I assumed that once Julie sowed her wild oats, we would be monogamous again. The situation I have now is not that enjoyable, as my relationship with Julie is less than ideal. It hasn't felt like my feelings have been respected by Julie, and I don't know if my feelings for her will survive this because of it. I think I would prefer a more traditional relationship to be honest. I have told Julie that wedding plans are on hold until we find a solution to some of our problems. Although she has been reluctant about counseling up to this point, but I feel like it necessary if we are to move forward. Otherwise we are going to drift farther apart until it's too late to salvage our relationship. The it Kate has is strange, but I have been diagnosed with hyperspermia, it hasn't affected my sperm count, but I do have an abnormally large volume. My doctor said it was nothing to worry about unless I develop other symptoms. Another comment from Opie. Actually, I have been dating Pam for almost three months now, but that is still pretty fast to be telling each other that we love each other. I feel like Julie and I were in a pretty good place and had talked about marriage, kids, and growing old together before I proposed. We had several talks about doubts and questions we both had before the topic of her exploring different experiences came up. She had done some experimenting in college, but it had never went very far, and it was something she was curious about. We both felt she should explore it before we settled down and got married. We both have made some bad decisions, and now we are here up to our hips in it. I'm torn between two decisions. One, is Julie still committed enough to me to salvage our relationship? Or two, is Pam really the right one in the long run? It's like flipping a coin in the dark and hoping you can catch it before it slips between your fingers and you lose it all. Comment 2 from Opie. OP. We did talk about health issues before we opened up and the agreement was to get tested before having cuddles with other people, something she hasn't done several times when she would hook up with a girl from the club. FYI, Pam and I didn't have cuddles even with a rubber until we both got tested. 
After sharing the results, we both decided to go barrier-free since she wasn't dating anyone else and neither was I. And yes, Julie was informed before it happened. You are right about one thing. No one owes me cuddles, either with or without a rubber. And that I.S. Julie is right to make that decision. But, rubberless is my preference, and I also have a right to abstain from cuddles with a rubber if I so choose. So I guess I will just pass on cuddles with Julie if rubbers are her preference. In the two and a half years that we lived together and had no protection cuddles, she only got one UTI, and since sleeping with Kate, she has had two yeast infections that I know of. As far as breaking up and dating separately, that option is definitely on the table. For the last several years, I had always thought we would have a family and grow old together, but if that is no longer her plan, then we might as well just cut the cord and find someone more compatible. Update 1. When Karma Comes to Dinner I stewed all day after reading all the comments and decided I was going to confront Julie when I got home, rehearsing my speech twice on the drive home. As I pull up to the house, I see Julie's mom's car in our driveway. I no sooner get in the door and I am bombarded by Julie and her mom to set a wedding date so they can start looking for a venue and start planning. I said something to the effect that there wasn't going to be a wedding. Her mom asked me what was I talking about and what the hell had gotten into my head. Ever had one of those moments when time slows to a crawl? I looked at Julie and gave a little laugh. The color drained from her face and fear filled her eyes. I turned to her mom and said, Since February Julie has been having an affair with a woman named Kate and it has ruined our cuddle life and I doubt if we will still be together a month from now. I walked into the living room and sat down listening to them go at each other. They went at it for about 10 minutes and they walked outside and I heard her mom's car drive away. Julie came back cussing asking how could I do such a thing. I said that ambush went sideways, didn't it? You should have confided in your mom and brought her up to speed first. I told her our relationship was a dumpster fire and I no longer wanted to get married. I was tired of her relationship with Kate overshadowing ours. She was still yelling at me so I got up and left the house and went to grab a bite to eat and let her cool off. It took her about 15 minutes to start blowing up my phone. I finally called her back when I was leaving the diner. She asked me to come home and talk it out. She was a lot calmer when I got back and we actually had a productive conversation. We are still a ways from a happy medium, but we are talking. She wants to know how we can fix things and I told her to make a list of what she thinks is fair and will help mend things and we can go from there. I told her I would do the same and tomorrow when we get home we can compare the lists. Update 2. A lot to unpack. So I decided to do a new update. I had told Julie to make a list of what she thinks is fair and will help mend things and we could compare her list with mine and see if there was a chance to move forward. So yesterday she called from work and said she needed to stop and talk with Kate before coming home but she would be there for dinner and we could talk. Finally, about 7 p.m. she called and asked if I could order pizza and bread and she would stop and pick up some wine. She came home and opened a bottle of wine as the pizza was being delivered. She handed me a list of things she had come up with and I handed her my list along with some printed out comments from and on moments when our relationship ended due to her actions. There were other good comments but these hit home with me. I told her they came from a message board and she wanted to read them all but I said now is not the time. Her talk with Kate went long because they got into an argument about Julie taking a step back and insulating the two relationships from each other. It was bad enough that Julie ended things with her before she left. She wrote down all her passwords and codes then handed her phone to me and said I might find some of it hard to read but she didn't want to hide anything from me anymore. She realizes now that Kate was doing everything she could to drive a wedge between us and she was stupid not to see it. She asked me if I had meant everything I had told her mom about the marriage and us not being together another month. I said there was no way I would marry the person she had shown me the last six months. I thought it would be better if we gave each other some space rather than treating each other like we had. She wanted to do therapy instead and close our relationship to get back to where we were. I was very blunt about the fact she had made promises to me before, like decisions about sexual health and testing and always putting us first that she had failed to keep so I had lost a lot of faith in her word. I wasn't going to close and risk losing what I had with Pam when our relationship was on the rocks. This hit her pretty hard, combined with killing the first bottle of wine and she ended up crashing on the couch. I stayed up and continued to go through her phone. Kate had consistently been running me down and trying to get Julie to push back and pull away from me. There had been women she traded pictures with, including two who had warned her about Kate's agenda. Some of Julie's graphic sex hurt me a little, because she had never sent anything like that to me. There were three from Kate today wanting Julie to come back over to work things out. There weren't any gaps or obviously deleted messages, and the rest of her social media supported what she had told me. This was all Tuesday night. 
Wednesday morning she was still hung over and asked me if I would be home tonight. I said Pam and I were going out to a movie and I would probably spend the night at her house. Julie sent me a text while I was at work amending her list from the other night. She had proposed going out only one night a week and having a midnight curfew but she scratched that off the list. She now wants two date nights a week with me. She still wants to see a therapist together. She wants six weeks to date me again and prove herself before I give up on her. She said she was open to talking about things I wanted to do that she had previously shot down. I am torn as to what to do, as much as I would like to turn back time. The pain is still fresh on my mind that she caused and there will always be a fear that Mrs. Hyde might reappear somewhere in the future. Relevant Comments Opie responds to few commenters. Opie, her stopping to see Kate explained itself when I went through her phone. There was an exchange that day when Julie told Kate some things needed to change and Kate asked to meet with her. They never discussed what those things were in the texts, so I assume that happened in a phone call. Kate's texts after they met were all trying to get Julie to reconsider their breakup, which Julie never answered. Looking back, I don't think she prioritized Kate. Instead, it was setting new boundaries and damage control. Kate pushed back and things escalated to a point where Julie just decided to end things. I'm leaning towards a break myself, but I have considered couples counseling before she brought it up. I may take some time and see what happens before pushing for a separation. Good question. We only opened up her side in the beginning to explore being with other women. It was never supposed to be a full relationship, just hooking up to satisfy her curiosity. If we did continue an open arrangement, her dating men would be something I would have to work through. And after what has happened, I would have major reservations and a lot of trust issues with. As you said, that would require some soul searching and serious consideration. The wedding is off the table. I asked for the engagement ring back, but she is still wearing it. I have canceled the actual wedding ring order though, and I should get half my deposit back next week. OP. I'm not ready to end things with Pam with Julie and I being on the verge of breaking up. Pam has been very understanding and supportive, but I wouldn't expect her to wait around if Julie and I were to close and shut her out. I just don't want to do anything rash and regret it later. Kind of like the decision to open up for Julie in the first place. When I walked in last night, Julie was on the couch, flipping through a stack of wedding magazines. It was like she was trying to pretend everything was normal. The tension was so thick, I could cut it with a knife. I dropped my bag and told her we needed to talk. She looked up, her eyes hopeful but cautious. Okay, what's on your mind? I took a deep breath. I read your list and I appreciate the effort, but I don't think we can just date our way back to normal. Too much has happened. Her face fell, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I want us to work. I know you do, but I need time. Time to think. Time to figure out what I really want. I'm not saying it's over, but I can't just jump back in like nothing happened. She nodded, tears brimming in her eyes. I understand. I really do. I grabbed my keys and headed out, needing some air. As I drove, my mind was racing. Did I want to salvage things with Julie? Could I even trust her again? Or was my future with Pam? Someone who made me feel alive and appreciated? I ended up at a park, sitting on a bench and watching the sunset. My phone buzzed, a text from Pam. Hey, thinking of you. How's everything going? I typed back a quick response, not ready to dive into everything yet. It's complicated. Can we talk later? She agreed, and I sat there, pondering my next move. It was clear that Julie was trying, but was it too little, too late? Could I really just forgive and forget? When I got back home, Julie was already asleep on the couch, her list and wedding magazines scattered around her. I covered her with a blanket and went to bed, my mind still in turmoil. The next morning, I woke up to the smell of coffee. Julie was in the kitchen, making breakfast. She smiled when she saw me. I made your favorite pancakes. I appreciated the gesture, but it felt like a band-aid on a bullet wound. We ate in relative silence, the weight of our situation hanging heavily in the air. As I left for work, she hugged me tightly. Please think about what I said. I love you, and I want to make this work. I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. The day dragged on, my mind constantly drifting back to our situation. By the time I got home, I was mentally exhausted. Julie wasn't there. A note on the counter said she had gone to see a therapist. I decided to take a shower and clear my head. As I stood under the hot water, my phone rang. It was Pam. I answered leaning against the tile wall. Hey, what's up? Just checking in. How are things going with Julie? I sighed, running a hand through my wet hair. It's complicated. She's trying, but I'm not sure if it's enough. 
Pam was silent for a moment. Do you want to come over? We can talk. I agreed, needing to get out of the house. When I arrived at Pam's, she greeted me with a hug, and we sat on her couch, talking about everything. She listened, offering support but not pushing me to make a decision. As the night wore on, I realized just how much I enjoyed being with Pam. She made me feel valued and respected in a way I hadn't felt in a long time. But was it enough to leave Julie behind? I left Pam's place in the early hours of the morning, my mind still a mess. When I got home, Julie was waiting for me, her eyes puffy from crying. We need to talk, she said, her voice trembling. I nodded, knowing that this conversation could change everything. We sat down, and I took a deep breath, ready to face whatever came next. Update 3. So, after Julie and I had that long, emotional talk, things were still super tense. She poured her heart out, admitting she made mistakes and promised to cut all contact with Kate, go to therapy, and focus on us. It was like she was trying to rebuild a bridge that had already burnt down. I told her I needed time to think and suggested we live separately for a while. Julie was devastated but agreed. She understood that I needed space to figure things out. As I packed a bag to stay with a friend, a mix of sadness and relief washed over me. It was clear that our relationship would never be the same. But maybe, just maybe, we could find a new normal. I left the house feeling a sense of freedom and drove to Pam's, hoping she'd understand my need for space and patience. When I got there, Pam opened the door, looking worried. How did it go? I stepped inside, feeling exhausted. It's a mess, but we're taking a break. I need to figure out what I really want. Pam nodded, pulling me into a hug. Take all the time you need. I'm here for you. We spent the night talking, and I realized how much I enjoyed being with Pam. She made me feel valued and respected in a way I hadn't felt in a long time. But was it enough to leave Julie behind? The next few days were strange. Julie was still at the house, and I was staying with a friend, but we were texting and trying to keep things civil. She was going to therapy and really trying to make an effort, but I couldn't shake the feeling that too much had changed. One evening, Julie asked if we could meet up to talk. I agreed, and we met at a quiet park. She looked nervous but determined. I've been thinking a lot, she began. I know I messed up, and I don't want to lose you. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make this work. I sighed, feeling the weight of her words. I know you are, Julie, but I need to be honest. I don't know if I can get past everything that's happened. I've lost a lot of trust in you. Tears filled her eyes. I understand. I just... I just want a chance to prove that I can be better. We talked for hours, going over everything again. She promised to give me space and to keep working on herself. I promised to think about everything, but I couldn't give her any guarantees. When I got back to Pam's place, she could tell I was struggling. How did it go? She asked softly. I collapsed onto the couch, feeling torn. She's really trying, but I don't know if it's enough. I care about her, but I also care about you. Pam sat next to me, taking my hand. I understand. It's a lot to process. Just know that I'm here for you, no matter what you decide. The next few weeks were a whirlwind of emotions. Julie was doing her best to show she had changed, but the trust issues lingered. Pam was supportive, giving me the space I needed to sort through my feelings. One night, as I was lying in bed, my phone buzzed. It was a text from Julie, I miss you, can we please talk? I stared at the screen, feeling a pang of sadness. I missed her too, but I couldn't ignore the pain she had caused. I needed more time. I texted back, I need more time to think. Let's talk soon. Update 4. After moving into my new apartment, I tried to rebuild my life. I kept seeing Pam, and she was everything I needed. Supportive, loving, and patient. But as much as I enjoyed my time with her, I couldn't shake the lingering thoughts about Julie and our past. It was like a shadow always following me. One rainy evening, Julie asked if we could meet up one last time before making any final decisions. I agreed, thinking maybe we both needed some closure. We met at our favorite coffee shop, the one where we used to spend lazy Sunday mornings. Julie looked different, more composed, but there was a sadness in her eyes that mirrored my own. She started by apologizing again, tears streaming down her face. She told me about her therapy sessions and how she'd realized the depth of the hurt she caused. She said she understood if I couldn't forgive her but needed to thank me for pushing her to become a better person. I told her I appreciated her efforts but that too much had changed. Our trust was shattered, and despite everything, 
I couldn't see us getting back together. Her face fell, and for a moment, I thought she might collapse from the weight of it all. We talked for hours, rehashing memories, good and bad. By the end of the night, we were both emotionally exhausted. We hugged, and it felt like saying goodbye to a part of my life that I once thought would last forever. As I watched her walk away in the rain, I couldn't help but feel an overwhelming sense of loss. Back at my apartment, I couldn't sleep. Pam came over, trying to comfort me, but I felt like I was living a lie. No matter how hard I tried, my heart was still tangled up with Julie. I realized that moving on wasn't as simple as I'd hoped. I cared deeply for Pam, but something was missing, a piece of my heart that Julie had taken with her. Over the next few weeks, things with Pam started to unravel. She could sense my inner turmoil, and despite her patience, the strain became too much. One night, she looked at me, her eyes filled with tears. I can't keep competing with a ghost, you know? Her words hit me hard. I tried to reassure her, but the truth was painfully clear. I wasn't fully present in our relationship. We decided to take a break, and it was one of the hardest conversations I've ever had. I watched another person I cared about walk out of my life, feeling like I was doomed to repeat the same mistakes. Julie and I stayed in sporadic contact, but it was never the same. She eventually started dating someone new, and I could see she was genuinely happy. It hurt, but I was glad she found someone who could give her what I couldn't.